I'm Dan McNeish. I'm an assistant professor in the quantitative psychology program, uh, which basically just means I do statistics applied to psychological data. So either create new models uh, for data or compare the properties of existing models to determine when each should be used. So it's an award from the American Psychological Association and any dissertation from the previous uh, three years, so up to 2015, which is when I finished mine, uh, is eligible. And uh, it's given uh, particularly to the dissertation that's in the field of uh, quantitative methods, psychological measurement, or statistics that applies to psychological phenomena, or psychological data. And so lots of statistical models focus on, uh, make this implicit assumption that uh, the sample size is, is rather large, which uh, in practice is, is not always the case. And it, uh, in some models it matters more than others, and so multi-level models uh, is a case where it matters a lot. And so multi-level data is basically occurs anytime you are looking at people who are clustered within some higher level unit. So that could be like students within schools, patients within hospitals, uh, employees within businesses, anything like that. Uh, the problem with these models is the sample size that counts is the one at the highest level. So the number of schools, the number of hospitals, uh, things like that. And so um, the problem is uh, it's a lot more difficult to get higher uh, sample sizes at those higher levels. So if you need 30 schools, you might have to get thousands of kids. And so lots of studies uh, don't have big sample sizes at this top level, but traditional statistical models typically require about 30 units at the highest level. Um, so the dissertation was mostly about alternative statistical models and statistical gymnastics that you can do uh, to get that sample size number down a little bit so that these types of models and the questions they answer are more applicable to a broader set of data sets and to researchers. The small sample size can be can occur for a couple of different reasons. So uh, you mentioned financial constraints is one, it costs a lot of money to get that many people. Uh, logistical or geographic constraints. So if you need 30 hospitals, you might have to go to a pretty broad extent and it might not be feasible to kind of go around and collect that data. Um, another instance is maybe special populations. So Sometimes there's schools that exist maybe for deaf students or for certain classes of students and there might not be 30 of those that are, that are easy to obtain. Or a lot of times international research, if you're talking the highest level, that might be a country. And so if you're like in the European Union, there might not be 30 countries uh, to, kind of, to sample from uh, in that case. So the, the quantitative program at ASU is historically and continues to be um, one of the top two or three quantitative psychology programs in the world. So when I got the, uh, the job offer, they didn't have to twist my arm that much uh, to convince me to come, and plus the lack of winter is always a, a positive too, not really complaining about that.